am not even gonna lie. I am so irritated and I hope that this is the last time I have to film this. This is like my third or fourth attempt filming this video. So this is gonna be today's Project Hobbit to Hot Damn. I forgot my phone. Let me go grab that, enjoy today's video. So we're just gonna get straight into the program because I have a lot to talk about. And the last few times when I filmed this video, they've ended up to be 20 minutes long. So we don't want that to happen. So let's get into it. So as you guys know, I am in Toronto and I will be here until the 25th. So thumbs up if you are excited for that Toronto meetup and just for the Toronto vlogs that are going to be coming. Today has been a weird week as I'm trying to adjust, trying to like adjust to the time and having like minor jet lag and stuff like that. But I am actually relatively close to two very popular gyms that seem to be out here. And the first one is Fortis Fitness, which is one direction of me. And then the next one is Good Life Fitness, Good Life Gym. I don't know, these are two gyms that have been highly recommended to me by various people that I know and don't know. So obviously I had to make my way to Fortis Fitness because of how popular it is and just all the great things that I've heard about it. So went down to Fortis Fitness. This video you're seeing was my second time lifting at this gym and honestly it is just incredible like I, I wish that I had a gym like this back home but truth be told gyms like this just don't really exist other than here <laughs> so I don't remember I think I had a sweatshirt I did have a sweater on the entire day it's really really cold out here hence why I am like hooded out right now because in the Bay Area the coldest it gets is maybe 65 here it's been here it's been like in the high 30s and like low 40s so even right now like I'm genuinely I'm so cold right now. So anyway, some people have been asking like, why are you wearing a sweater? I'm like, can a girl be cold in peace? I mean, shit. Anyway, so this is a video that is now two or three days old, I wanna say. But before we get into the actual lifting, you guys have been watching some of my mobility playing and that is because I honestly never do any type of mobility and it is so bad and I don't recommend it to anybody to just YOLO it and just go in the gym and start lifting weights. Like you should absolutely be warming up before you do lifts, especially heavy lifts for that matter because it's just so taxing on the body. So I like went into the gym and I got to have both my coaches Omar and Nigel there today. So I saw them and they're like, all right, go ahead and warm up and then we'll be there to like critique your form and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> Funny story about that guys. I don't warm up and they were like, yeah, we know that is fucked Basically like please start warming up. So I was like, okay I don't really know you know what you guys want me to do and Omar's like here I've got just the video he pulled up one of his lower body mobility videos Which I have a annotation here and a link in the description box for you guys to check out I swear I actually do this time and so you guys can pretty much follow along what I'm doing How dare you question? How dare you? How dare you? Group, where's the water? explain what I did only because he literally explains every single step and why he's doing it and what it's gonna benefit in the video so you guys might as well just watch that one obviously like as I progressively get stronger it's something that I definitely need to start working in so if you guys would like to see some of the mobility that I do before we like get into the lifting footage then make sure that you like this video that way I know that say something in the comment section and I will be sure to start throwing those in because I absolutely have to make it a point to do some mobility before I lift all right so straight into the program we started off with sumo deadlift with a belt finally tightened <laughs> finally tightened my belt it just needed to be moved over by one little like prong one little hole and, and it was fine now it's great so we fixed that made that minor change now it'll be great for my squats and my deadlifts so today was my first day getting to use it and it couldn't have been a better day because this day was a rep PR for me so as you guys know my last PR about three weeks ago was a 200 pound PR well it was supposed to be 200 pounds but it ended up being too light for me so then I ended up moving up to 215, which is my body weight, two times my body weight. So that was very exciting. So this week, as I prepare for a PR for next week, which I will absolutely have a video on, I should hopefully be PRing with my bench and my deadlift next week. For my first three sets, I was able to have my coaches there to actually critique me in person, whereas I'm normally used to just, you know, connecting with them on WhatsApp, which they're actually incredible. Their response rate and everything is incredible. But it's also really nice that these people that I'm constantly communicating with on WhatsApp, I'm finally able to have them like for an in-person session to like get honest crit criticism with and just really like hear what their thoughts in person during the motion during the movement 
during all of that. But anyway, onto the actual sets. Today I did five sets and working with three reps for every single set that I did. So first I did 170 pounds for three. From there I moved on to 180 pounds for three. From there it was 190 and around this point I was like, shit, this is kinda hard for me right now, but you gotta keep pushing. After 190 was finally my rep PR of 200 pounds by three. And the weight did move, it did go pretty quickly. I could move a lot faster, absolutely, as speed is something that could be improved on there and although my form started to compromise a little bit I noticed like my tailbone was starting to like tuck under a little bit and I just started to get a little lazy a little more loose towards the end I still got the 200 pounds up and I am absolutely like very very proud of that and for my last final set I just backed off to 190 again just to kind of do a little deload there and that was it for my sumo deadlifts they felt fine and I was able to get some in-person critique and just like motivation from just basically everybody lifting there. Naturally, I was pretty fried after doing the sumo deadlift, so when I moved on to high bar squats, last week I was able to do 135. With my hard bar squats, I do four sets of six, so I was able to do 135 pounds for six last week, and I was like, hell yeah, bitches, like I feel great, but um, I was not able to do that. So if you guys watched my powerlifting video with Brendan, we talked about RPE, which is rate of perceived exertion, which is basically what weight it'll take me on that given day for me to reach exhaustion. So then I moved up to 135 and my form gets really, really shaky around these areas. Like I felt like I was really starting to hyperextend my back and I was moving really, really slow and you could just tell that I was tired and I was like, okay, maybe <laughs> I need to let go of whatever little bit of an ego I've given myself from doing 135 for six last week and just drop it back down to 115 so that I can focus on what these are for. And this is for speed and this is for really focusing on my form with high bar squats. So I pushed down my ego and dropped right back down to 115 for six. Again, I was tired after my rep PR, so it was no big deal. Cranked those out and then moved on to my stiff-legged deadlifts with a barbell. Now, I honestly don't remember what weight I used here. I, I want to say it was anywhere from 105 to 115. Obviously, I always list the weight on the screen now with pounds and kilos. So you guys are seeing what the actual weight was because I've been able to figure it out upon editing. So I did my stiff-legged deadlifts and I want to say that was three sets of five. Again, not sure of the weight. And it was, again, nice to have my coaches there to critique my form and give me any feedback, but it didn't really seem like they had much to say. I know in the comment section, some of you guys will say like, oh, I feel like maybe you should do like a deficit stiff like a deadlift because it seems like you're not getting a full reach. But guys, I honestly am. Like I feel the pull where I need to and I'm squeezing my glutes at the top and I am feeling fried after I do this movement. So until they tell me like, okay, let's try switching it up, that's when I'll actually do it because right now they feel just fine and my coaches don't have anything to say. We are almost done here and we've only been recording for 12 minutes, which is actually a miracle because last time, the last three times I filmed this video, it was about 18 minutes it's deep that I was finally getting to this part. So from here, I moved on to goblet squats, and I don't know if I'm actually gonna end up keeping this video in, but there was a guy that I met at the gym who is behind me while I'm doing my goblet squats, and his mobility is like impeccable. Like, he was able to do goblet squats and get just like a perfect range of motion with his feet standing straight, his legs weren't even that far apart, his chest was completely up, and his form was just incredible, and I was like, damn. I really need to step my game up. Props to you, dude. Like, your mobility is the shiznai and I need to get on your level. So, knocked out that, and then the very last thing that I have is the leg curl machine, and so at my gym, I normally just do a lying down hamstring, you know, prone curl type of deal, but Sean, the owner of Fortis Fitness, has actually created his own machine. It was like this big old thing, and you basically, I mean, you guys are seeing, I'm like going in there, and I'm putting my foot in, you stick your leg, like you would just the levers to your height and your size and then adjust the weight and it's actually an isolated prone leg curl which is just awesome because when I use my leg curl machine back home I have the tendency to work one hamstring more than I do the other. I don't really know why I do that but just one of them ends up being way more sore than the other one the following day. So to actually just put all the focus into one hamstring was super cool, very, very isolated, and I really, really enjoyed this machine. I'm probably gonna miss it. It's gonna be one of the things that I'll miss the most when I return back home to my gym. If you lift at Fortis, you are definitely spoiled, so. Also, thanks to the couple of you that have come up and said hello to me at Fortis. It means a lot. If you see me, 
out here in Toronto, like at any given time, please do not hesitate to say what's up because it genuinely makes my home of the fucking day. So anyway, to finish it all off, I did my 10 minutes of hit, and I say this every video, I literally just do 90 seconds steady, and 30 seconds hard on the elliptical. I change up the levels once I do 30 seconds hard to just make it a little harder for me to actually like, you know, push because the resistance gets different at that point. So that is it, that is it for today's video. I'm sorry that this is being filmed two days after the actual lifting session, but there will be, but there will absolutely be more videos to come and, and definitely just like more vlogs and things of that nature on the channel. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to show your support by throwing this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please be sure to do that. I upload like two or three times a week. I love you guys to absolute pieces and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace!